Hello there everybody and welcome back to episode 10 of Rockhold the Gift of Shadow. Well today, as you can see, we're going to expand this city a little bit. I have a little bit of a temple planned here, a couple of apartments, maybe another temple here. And we're definitely going to expand on what we got before. I have a small time tunnel going this way. And the big thing that I want to work on today that is a well, because this city does need a underground freshwater access. So there's a couple of things that we have to do today. Let's get started. So let's see, I'm going to go and I think I'm going to dig a cistern right here. I think that should be a pretty good spot. So let's dig out into this direction. All these they will uh, they will take a while, but I'm quite happy with how Rockhold is uh, coming together now. Okay, so let's see if we go downstairs here. Oh, the the forgotten beasts are added. They're killing each other, jamming the skull through the brain. Uh, okay, that's a battle between a Gorlack. Oh no, they. Uh, they're still not uh, on on top of each other. They are they are killing other inhabitants of the uh, tier one caverns. I mean, I could spend really a lot of time here on of today's episode by just watching one dive ghost and his nemesis, but we're just going to wait. Which one of the both uh, which one of both of them will will eventually die? So let's see. So yeah. Turns out the cistern needs to be here. Okay, I mean, this pretty much plays into my into my plans. So here we have now the classic situation where you have to reassign every single job. It's very annoying. So yeah. Step one, we are going to put a door in here. So the water that will leak into this chamber will not influence our, our situation negatively. I mean, right now I'm still waiting for any water to come up, but uh, well. We are now going to Ah, here it goes. Wonderful. Ditch it out completely. Okay. So, what's going to be the next one? Forgotten beasts are pretty much killing everything down there. <laughs> I like it. So, yeah, and... I think this will be already the end of this little cistern here. I really do hope that we will be able to fill this place up that way. But I think this will work out. Okay. There goes our will. We got everything required for that. Brilliant. Now we just need to sufficiently sophisticate the area around that. Okay. I think this will take a while until the, the aquifer is filling up the entirety of this. But since we have a pretty large area excavated, I am pretty positive that this thing will fill up eventually completely. All right, so Rockhold requires also a person hitting ahead the hotkeys, right? Oh, yeah. And Mayor Melville, of course, requires rooms as well. There's so much to do. But first and foremostly, let's settle down the chief medical dwarf. So Catton. Well, Catton is also a fighter. I see that because the administrators are usually fighters. So we're going to bring 
Etour, the diagnostician, into business. So, first of all, let's make this happen here. Okay, doctors. Yeah, Zarvish can be a doctor. Adil can do the diagnostician's task. We're going... Ooh, Udib is actually a proficient surgeon. Now, who would have thought? And Miss Tim, the wax worker, is now the bone doctor. Okay, brilliant. We merely would need a little bit of soap, and then this whole hospital is already a done deal. So, I will now continue constructing the mayor's quarters. Did prepare something, didn't I? Yep. And then we're going to inspect our dwarf of the day, which is, of course, the chief medical dwarf. But uh, first things first, we need to floor this place up. So... I want to use Slate. Or a change. Oh, actually, it's not a change at all. It's just the same as all apartments. Eh, well, alright. Melville is, after all, a man of the people, so I think it is completely okay to have it like that. With uh, Rockhold filling up in numbers so fast, things are getting done much faster than just a couple of months ago. I'm not that sad that uh, we don't have these artificial timers on us that make us wait for a pretty long time. I'm not missing them at all. Alright, so meanwhile there is one death message after another incoming from the forgotten beasts down below. Alright, so let's put up yeah. the necessary things that a mayor requires. I do suppose uh, like to put in a table into the uh, the office as well because I personally feel like what is an office without a table? It just uh, feels darn wrong to me. So and let's see, that should pretty much do the trick already. I I am pretty sure that value wise we're not getting there yet, but uh, well, there's always something I'd say. And here we go. Oh. That is not really good. Ugh. There we go. That's that. And last but not least, finally the bedroom. Here we go. So, well... Merely the quality ain't good enough. The rest is just uh, to Melville's liking. Wonderful. So let's uh, do the smoothings. Smooth it all out. And see if the mayor does like it uh, then. But I have my, my, my high master engraver still available. So I think we should be perfectly fine on that end. Okay, so let's open up the next fields. I want more pigtails. Pigtails all along. Sweet pods. More pigtails. So yeah, I'm going all in here with that. Because next episode it will finally take care of the... fabric production. Or, well... Clothing production, I should rather say. I just haven't had it in me so far to go down the road and uh, issue all the work orders for cloth clothes making because it's just <laughs> it's just such a pain. But well, we're going to get through that. So as it stands, Melville deeply craves the artwork. And while all that is being made, 
we are going to follow a day in her doctor's life afterwards. And once all these things are set up, I think it is uh, really very, very much time to set up proper defenses. Because I'm really, really scared about the uh, future of War of War for it right now. So, Etour. Etour Council Pages. He eschews practical concerns for philosophical discussions, puzzles, riddles, and the world of ideas. He dislikes obligations and will try to avoid being bound by them. Though he is conflicted by this for more than one reason, he cracks easily under pressure and he seeks out exciting and adventurous situations. He often feels discouraged, he often acts with compassion, and he's curious, eager to learn. Well, that's a fitting trait for a doctor. He's grateful when others help him and tries to return favors. He can sometimes act without deliberation, and he can easily fall in love or develop positive sentiments. He prefers to present himself models modestly, and he tends to be a little tight with resources when working on projects. So, you do like this uh, Daysite? Desite? I don't know how to pronounce that. Platinum, sapphire, rings, cabbies for their adorable call, the sound of the lavender bells and the sight of the lyrics of reticence, and possibly prefers to consume brook lamprey and dwarven wine. He absolutely detests leeches. Yeah, who doesn't? So, we got a weaponsmith in a fey mood. He grabbed himself an iron bar and off he went. A tour, I, I'm, I, I failed to mark you. So, welcome aboard the main cast tour. The real interesting part about him is he is a OG member. He came with the first wave of immigrants to Rockhold. And, yeah, well, I, I, I do like that. Datan Wheels Ward, on the other hand, is a year 103 person. I got the. I'm living under the impression that a lot of year 103 people are among us. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong about that. So, Datan, tell me more about you, as you are now our new master weapons maker. He often feel, feels filled with joy. He is inattentive to detail in his own work. He's stingy with resources on projects and refuses to expend any effort. Uh, iron Warhammer, sweet. Um, where were we? He's very stubborn. He tends to make a small mess with his own possessions and he's very humble. He likes a little excitement now and then and he tends not to reveal personal information. He generally acts with a narrow focus on the current activity and he's quite ambitious. He stammers when he's excited. He clicks his tongue occasionally when he's bored and he's always taking a deep breath whenever he's surprised. He becomes very rigid when he's angry. How on earth can this be? guy be a legendary weaponsmith? I like it. It's the, the typical situation where you have somebody who's obviously not good at what he's doing personality wise but uh due to some weird dwarven magic he is welcome aboard so we need to do some gem cutting reels the dwarven trade caravan is in town and we haven't have we, we haven't prepared i wanted to but then i forgot to do so well our friends from the from from what's the fortress called actually? Our friends from Gleam Mirrors are with us. And I'm quite happy they are. So here we go. This uh, gem cutting will bring us some money. And with that money I hope we can pay the gem the, the, the metal bars that they'll be delivering. I want to train up one or two soldiers next because I want to be capable of killing off whatever breaks through our defense eventually. I have a really really bad feeling after seeing how the uh, Minotaur just casually jogged through all the glass traps that we've put up. That beast just didn't really 
to, it, there was really nothing that these traps really did to it. And it was the spear of Nish who felt the beast with one particular precise blow. I think I really should bring up a statue of that. That was too badass to not, uh, to not make a memorial out of that. In the meantime, the forgotten beasts are killing one thing and another thing. And another thing. I'm quite surprised that they didn't run into one another yet. So. Come on, Mr. Broker. The gems are there. I mean, we didn't cut too many gems. So I'm uh, quite afraid that we will have some trouble in paying the for these. But we'll see. So they... Brought only the chest with the rough ones. No. No water. So let's do the trade and gift away a couple of these. It ain't wise to gift them away while they are uncut, but whatever. Um, it is now what it is. We did our trade. We most importantly we got our metals. That is uh, what really is. Uh, very valuable conclusion of the case to me. How many creatures will die in there still? Jeez. Okay. I think it is about time that Nish gets some company. So I obviously been wrong about Katten. Just a novice fighter. Okay. No mall. Okay. Let's put Nomal up to this. And we're going to gear out Nomal with the artifact hammer. Because why not? I don't see any reason why I shouldn't. So we're going to craft now the gear for these heroes very, <laughs> very much manually. So there will be a wooden shield. And then we're going to make Iron Breastplate two times. And then let's see what uh, we got, bar-wise. <laughs> I'm actually really pretty much considering to bring up a... Um, third warrior instead. So, let's see. Who got the armor armor skill armor smith? So, Robot is my best armorer, so he shall take the smithy now. And we're just going to put these onto utmost urgency, and that way the um, people here will. Inot will now do that once, but uh, after that, I think Robot should uh, overtake. The thing here is, you see these uh, breastplates; they cost three iron bars each. It's a pretty high cost. Ugh, standard quality. That's not good. That's why I put up specialists on the task, you see. So, Rovod is on the task now. Rovod spare circle, spare circled. So I do think I also forgot one other thing again. So, Daton Wheels Ward. We went over all your details, and I didn't mark you. I don't know why I miss marking my dwarves today so much, but, uh, well. It is as it is. Okay, so we got those two tasks down. There we go. That's quality. Superior quality breastplate. Mm-hmm. So we got plenty of bronze left. So, well... I will just bring up another 
runs Battle Axe. Wait a sec, that is the, the wrong... Um, here. A Bronze Battle Axe. And a Bronze Rest Blade. Because I think the most important thing will be to have the at least three people that can train up their skills somewhat decently. I think that is uh, really, really important. So... Mark's dwarfs from the previous Ford have arrived as well. Interesting. They hail from the creations of spreading, so probably we should bring up some, some of these as well. But uh, up until then, Autumn is looking like a good choice here. And to round it up, another wooden shield. Ah, oh, down. There. Blech. So we need to manually allow them to equip a shield. So, shields, generally, should do the trick. Yep. Here they had beforehand the uh, specification of certain materials there, but... Uh, yeah, that second shield is being made right now. Perfect. And more people are arriving. I'm going insane. All right, Olin, the Animal Dissector, Stukos the Trapper, Tekut the Clothier, Mepzuth the Farmer, Kulut the Administrator, <coughs> Mafal and Nish the Bone Doctors, and Tirist the Surgeon. So, seems like word has spread that we got ourselves a, a hospital going down here, and the doctors are coming. Why not? Always happy to see that we have the capacity to get more patients treated. So yeah, I I don't know if it was a wise choice to use Gabro. We'll see how that we'll we'll find that out. Quarrying that stuff might be a little bit complicated. But I mean it sounds sure quite badass to say our Gabro is excavated directly from the depths of the magma sea. Deep from the bowels of the earth. That's where our Gabro is coming from. Not that loser Gabro from other people. No, no. The good Gabro. Okay, I'm done now. It's just a coincidence that we have that stuff on really difficult on these uh, uncomfortable areas. Petitions! The guild... <laughs> yeah, of course. Of course the doctors want a guild now. When all the the doctors from the from the outside um, forts are now arriving. Of course, of course. So I need to construct another lever for the second one. Second bridge to seal off the fort. If push comes to shove, I don't want to be... I don't want to be without any chances of survival there. Okay, so I'd say the Doctor's Guild Hall should be really directly connected to the hospital because obvious reasons. Let's do something like that. Yeah, I'd say that is okay. So, we... How are our stockpiles looking like? Pretty good, actually. Positively surprised. Yay! So, Mayor Melville. We are going to order, of course, fresh iron and bronze bars, as we do each and every year. I mean, overall, this whole deal does bring us exactly what we require. So I wonder, is one iron bar enough to make a, another short sword? We'll find out.
If so, I'm gonna gear out soldier number four. They might have only a breastplate, a shield and a weapon, but I mean, at the end of the day, that's better than nothing. I mean, Nish just strangled those darn troglodytes before, she, uh, before he had a real weapon, so... It did work out too, was a bit barbaric, but uh, you see. <laughs> All right, so well, let's get this done here. Up here, I'm going to go for old school siltstone. And I don't know what kind of uh, material the walls will be. Let's see. I think I'm going to go with slate. Differently uh, colored walls might break the aesthetics a little bit too much for my taste. There we go. Say, do we still have traction benches? Yes, we do. Perfect. Because it wouldn't be a proper Doctor's Guild Hall without, uh, without show-off. Go. Probably. A chest here. What I'm lacking, but I don't have it right now, are bookcases. I really think I need it to order a few of these as well, eventually. But first things first, let's make that guild hall official. Doctor, doctor, the summer of clearing. So, of course, this guild hall is open for all visitors. Here again, the policy comes to play. This is a fort that is meant to be pretty much that has an ambassador function. Therefore, our halls are open for all. I find it very uh, fitting that we got a tavern keeper as our... Um, as our mayor at this point because well it, it reflects the spirit of uh of sandwall uh, of sandwalls of rockhold quite decently i think all right so we can now dismantle this little uh operation here as well we have obsidianized that thing so we don't need it anymore brilliant the best part is we have now the gear for soldier number four cool it yeah, why not? Proficient wrestler. We're definitely going to teach you more than just wrestling, but it is not the worst of starts. Let's create another shield. And now I feel a lot better about defending this place. We still need better traps. Lots of traps. Trappier traps. But uh, it's a start. Jeez, a tear. It's uh, kind of a weird thing that, uh, well, probably we should make some crafts. That will, uh, that should help, yeah. That's a good idea. Alrighty, my good friends. I'd say we are reaching the end of today's episode. I appreciate having you. I hope you had a good time. Leave me your comments down below. I'm all ears to hear back from you, and a big thanks to everybody watching these series so diligently. It's my pleasure to make these. I also want to invite you to leave a thumbs up, or consider subscribing if you haven't done so already, and check out the description box. There's so much Dwarf Fortress stuff hanging out there, you might want to check it out. And you'll also find my Discord server there, and my Twitch, and of course, Check also Patreon, Paypal, or buy me a coffee if you want to support the channel, then that's the way to go. I'd be really appreciating if you'd also take a look at the channel membership system, especially you Dwarf Fortress viewers can benefit from having early access to the daily episodes that I have preemptively uploaded and scheduled, so you can 
binge watch some. I'd be really happy if you did. And yeah, last but not least, I want to say thanks to everybody supporting the channel and thanks especially, first and foremostly, no, not first and foremostly, but alongside that, to you right now here watching this video. I really appreciate. And I hope you are coming back when we will, I don't know, I think I need to fix up more of the city and finally start thinking about where and how the castle will be built. So very much looking forward to these parts and uh, I hope you'll be there as well. See you, see you there. Bye bye.